What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today I am in Parkersburg, West Virginia, and I'm here to talk about Susie Bailey. She was a 15 year old girl in 1969, set fire to her family's house, killing 12 members of that family. Why you may ask? Because her father would not let her date her cousin. We're going to talk about the Bailey family, a very large family. Charles Bailey, 41 years of age, and his wife, Ruby, 36, had 13 children. Yes, yes, 13 children. Judy, who was 19 years old at the time of the fire, had already gotten married and moved away to Illinois. So living at home, you had Nancy, 17, Susie, 15, Roger, 13, Patricia, 11, Claudia, 8, Mary, 7, Tim, 6, Debbie, 5, Steve, 3, Dale, 2, Ted, 1 years old, and Ricky, six months, years old. Susie was a truant, did not want to go to school, did not want to listen to her parents. Uh, she had been sent to a girls reform school before. So pretty much she was the only real troublemaker in the family. Originally, the Baileys had moved here from Work County, which is about 15 miles or so away from here because, well, hey, uh, he got a pretty decent job here as a maintenance supervisor down at the courthouse. And you have 13 kids, you got to feed them somehow. So they moved up to Parkersburg, had rented a house. While they were living here, Charles told Susie about her boyfriend, who was her boyfriend? John Bumgarner. Uh, John Bumgarner was also another uh, truant, another uh, weirdo, another loser. Uh, he was not a good influence on his daughter. And oh yeah, by the way, he's your cousin. That's weird. She would sneak off, try to go see her cousin and oftentimes, Charles or Ruby would catch her hanging out with them. There have been times where they would see, be seen together around town, sneaking around the park, doing whatever. Other than the fact that this guy is bad news. Oh, and again, he's your cousin. Oh, and also, he's 19 years old, you're 15. He told his daughter, Susie, if I catch you one more time, one more time with that bum, bum garner, I'm going to have him arrested because he's overage and this is illegal and immoral on top of that. Hello, he's your cousin. Susie really, really loved her cousin. Not in that way either. And she set up a plan. She said, I want to be with my cousin. How badly she wanted to be with her cousin was gonna be put to plan on June 8th of 1969. So she tells her brother Roger, hey, I wanna be with John, let's set the house on fire. Being 13 years old, there's never really any truly bright 13 year olds out there. Some are, you know, most of us were not. But I'm going to guess that the average 13 year old, if your sister tells you, hey, let's set the family house on fire while they're sleeping, I'm going to say that the average 13 year old is going to say no. But this kid was an absolute and complete moron. And on the very early morning hours of June 8th, 1969, he actually helped his sister set fire to the family home killing everybody inside. 
On that night, going into the very early morning hours, Susie grabs her brother Roger and says, hey, let's set the fire. They go to her dad's truck and start siphoning gasoline out of it and pouring it into these plastic wash basins. They creep into the house and they start sla sloshing gasoline all over the floor, everywhere. And as soon as they were done, they strike a match, throw it on the ground, and the house goes up like tissue paper. It was a tar paper roof that was on that house. And if anybody knows about roofing, there's a reason why we do not use tar paper to use for roofs of houses no longer because it's very, very dangerous. If there is a fire, it just goes up so quick. And that's exactly what happened. Now, on the other side of this building right here, on the highway out there, there was a drive-in called Jimbo's. It was a very popular joint where people would hang out Friday, Saturday night, show off their cars, show off their motorcycles, meet girls, and what have you. When the house caught on fire, people from the uh, drive-in noticed the fire and they immediately called 911. And police and firefighters, they arrived. One of the responding officers was Charlie Lorenz. And by the time he got here, which is right around where this fire took place, the house used to sit right about here, is my best guess on where the fire was. By the time he got to the fire, it was so bad, he couldn't even get anywhere near close to help them. He heard a woman screaming the screams that he will live with for the rest of his life. And there was absolutely nothing that he could do. By the time the fire department got right behind him, it was already too late. Even though the walls still stood on that house, everybody in the house except the grandfather, Obi, all died. When the fire was finally put out, the only survivor of everybody that lived in the home was the grandpa, Obi Bailey. He was 63 years old. And of course, Susie and Roger. When the fire department got there, they seen the granddad just sitting in a chair and he wasn't doing anything. He was just looking straight ahead. He was in complete shock. Now, the police officer, when he wrote his report and wrote in the report that the grandfather was just sitting in a chair, not trying to do anything, not trying to go into the fire, not screaming, not doing anything. Uh, it, it immediately brought uh, in some kind of suspicion on who set the fire. They took him down to the station and they asked him, well, what were you doing? Uh, blah, 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 how'd you get out? He said, I got out through the bathroom window. And the granddad did not live with the family. He was only here because he was going through medical problems and the hospital in Parkersburg was a lot closer. He lived in a small town down in Ward County. So they start immediately becoming suspicious of the granddad and they ask him to see uh, his financial records. Come to find out during the investigation, he lied about some kind of money or what he had. Immediately, he's the number one suspect. Now, the police did not arrest him yet because they just don't have any evidence that he set the fire. But, of course, according to the uh, fire department and the investigators, obviously, it was an arson because they seen the splash patterns of the gasoline. I believe that's how they uh, conduct the uh, investigations in regards to arson. So, the next day, 12 members of your family are dead. You have the family who went to a relative's house down the street, Carl Bailey, and everybody is sitting around the house, uh, around the table, excuse me. And the police are telling the family, we have reason to believe that Obi set the fire 
for whatever reason. As they're sitting around the house, Roger, 13 years old, the one that helped his sister set the fire, he stands up and says, I'll bet you $10,000 that Grandpa didn't set that fire. And Carl said, well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And he said, well, if you promise not to tell, me and Susie started the fire. And everybody immediately turns and looks at him and says, what? He says, we set the fire because Susie asked me to because she was tired of daddy not letting her see John. Quite shocking to say the least if you're a family member and uh, a lot of your family members died and to hear your nephew say this could be quite shocking. Immediately, they call the arson investigator that was conducting the investigation and tell him what Roger just said. They bring him down to the station. He makes a verbal confession. They take him down to the prosecutor's office or the courthouse and he makes a verbal and a written confession. Immediately, they start looking for Susie. They find her. Of course, she's hanging out with her bum, bum garner cousin doing whatever godforsaken, disgusting things that cousins that aren't supposed to do to one another are doing to one another. They sit both Susie and Roger in the prosecutor's office, and both of them gave a signed, written confession and did so verbally as well. The next day, they at first are charged with two counts of first degree murder, and then later, the other 10 counts are also added to that. So now they are being charged with 12 counts of first degree murder. Now, if you see this store right in front of you, the house was located somewhere in the backwoods of what used to be a Kmart. You see a lot of these empty Kmarts all across the country. Very rarely do I ever see one open. There's an old, uh, I guess you can call it a story about this place being haunted. I was reading online. I don't do those kinds of videos. I just find it kind of funny that there's been people that have written stories about hanging out in the back at night. I don't know if it has anything to do with the fire. Just uh, something that... I wanted to add to the story, so. We are going to head about uh, 18 miles down the road to uh, Work County. Uh, we're gonna go to the final resting place of the Bailey family. And here we are at the Bethel Methodist Church Cemetery here in Work County. I believe we're just outside of Elizabeth. And you can tell this cemetery doesn't get too many visitors. And this is where the Bailey family were laid to rest. Now, because of it being a mass grave, it'll be like an open area and I think I see it right there. Yeah, there it is. Each of them were buried uh, sharing a coffin. So it was two people per coffin, six coffins. 
their grave was the size of a small swimming pool so it would basically be this area right here and that is where the services were at that church and even though uh, Susie and Roger were charged with the murders they were allowed to attend the pre-funeral but they weren't allowed to actually come to uh, see them uh, laid to rest and the wife of Obi the only survivor of the fire uh, she had screamed uh, during the service and she tried to like jump in after the coffins and she had to be restrained uh, this was very very horrible and this uh, made international news this was being reported in West Germany the United Kingdom Ireland South Africa A horrible, horrible, horrible murder. Twelve people murdered. Rest in peace to the Bailey family and the children. Charles and Ruby lost their lives that tragic day. Okay, well, that's the end of the video. So you're probably wondering, well, what happened to Susie and Roger Bailey? And I'm not going to lie to you. I've looked them up and down all over the place. And I really can't tell you. The only thing that I know is that I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that Susie Bailey ended up marrying somebody and the last thing i heard online was that she passed away sometime after 2010 maybe the early 2000 teens uh roger bailey totally disappeared off the face of the planet uh name change adopted by possibly a family he went through the foster system that's it i don't know if he is alive i don't know if he's dead just a uh very very tragic sad horrific story um just that's it just disappeared into the annals of history uh, never to be remembered ever again but uh here i am though however to tell a story and to let people know that you know the bailey family they were alive just like you and me and were horrifically killed by their own kids Anyways, I will catch up with you on the next vlog. Thank you for watching. Have a good day, guys. Peace out.